Joining me right now with reaction to the deposition of Hunter Biden and a further look at how the CCP is undermining America in plain sight is the president of the Government Accountability Institute, Peter Schweitzer. Peter is, uh, Peter is the uh, best-selling author, and his latest book is incredible, Blood Money, Why the Powerful Turn a Blind Eye While China Kills Americans. The book is available right now. Peter, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Great to be with you as always. Thanks, Maria. I, I want to get your take on what's going on with the Chinese Communist Party and why it seems to have no fear whatsoever of Joe Biden and the Biden family. Does the CCP have something on the Biden family? Yeah, I think absolutely they do. You have these financial connections, as you've talked about and I've talked about, with more than $30 million from China going to the Biden family. Uh, as I point out in the new book, Maria, it also now includes an element of Chinese organized crime. And I think it's the reason that Joe Biden is not talking about fentanyl in the context of China's involvement. Uh, specifically, there's a Chinese gang called UBG that's widely credited with setting up the Sinaloa cartel in Mexico and making them the kings of fentanyl. The leader of that gang is a guy named Zhang An Lo, who goes by the name White Wolf. It was White Wolf's business partner who wired a $5 million interest-free forgivable loan to the Biden family. And it was specifically designated not just for Hunter, for the family. So does Joe Biden want to have a conversation about these tough issues? Does he want to hold China into account? Absolutely not. And I'm convinced it's because of these financial entanglements. So you think that this is, if you're one degree of separation away from Joe Biden or the Biden family, uh, you, you don't get the sanctions. I mean, we saw that with Baturina, right? Maria Baturina is, a, a, is an oligarch in Russia, uh, and she wasn't hit with any sanctions. She's the one who you wrote about who sent uh, Hunter Biden a check for $3.5 million several years ago. Yeah, you're right. There's a pattern here, because guess what? White Wolf Zhang An Lo is not on the sanctions list either, even though Joe Biden has, you know, touted the fact that he's holding Chinese uh, uh, leaders that are involved in the fentanyl trade, and he's using sanctions as a tool. White Wolf is not on that list. Uh, by the way, I should add that Chinese leaders laugh at these sanctions. Uh, in fact, there was a, a gentleman named Wan who was sanctioned by the Biden administration uh, for his involvement in the fentanyl trade by the Treasury Department. A couple of months later, he was given an award by the CCP for his work, and he gave a rousing speech where he talked about how he was using his criminal organization, working with others, to help China in its battle with the United States. So they do not take Joe Biden seriously on fentanyl at all, even though this is a Chinese operation, much more so than it is a Mexican cartel operation. That's, that's a really important point. You say that the Chinese are the senior partner here in terms of the drug trade, these billion-dollar businesses that they're flowing fentanyl and even worse, uh, meth and all, and all these other drugs. Tell me about that, because we've been talking about the Mexican cartels, the dangerous drug cartels that are in charge. You say they're not in charge. They're the junior partner. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I lay it out in blood money in, in excruciating detail. We know the precursors from fentanyl come from China. They go to the port of Manzanillo, which is on the west coast of Mexico. Guess who runs the international terminal where 90 percent of those precursors flow? A Chinese company. Those precursors are then shipped to a town in northern Mexico, where, according to our own federal government, 2,000 Chinese nationals just happen to be in this Mexican town, and they take those precursors and turn them into fentanyl. Now you need to take that fentanyl and put them into pill form. Because remember, a lot of people dying from fentanyl poisoning don't even know they're taking fentanyl. They think they're taking a, a Vicodin or Adderall. So you need pill presses with very sophisticated molds to make these pills look like the real thing, even though they're fake. Those pill presses come from China. And according to our Department of Homeland Security, the Chinese are selling pill, pill presses to the Mexican cartels at cost. They're not price gouging. And then the final steps, Maria, if you are a drug organization operating in the United States, you need secure communications. Guess what the Mexican drug cartels use for secure communications? They use Chinese apps and Chinese encrypted communications wow. because they know that the Chinese won't share that with the United States. And the final step is a criminal drug organization needs to launder money. 
In the days of cocaine, they used Latin American banks. They now, again, according to our own federal government, are using uh, Chinese state-owned banks to launder the money. And they oftentimes use Chinese students in the United States on education visas to do so. So the Mexican cartels are the junior partners. It is China that is running this operation as a strategy to poison Americans. It's now the leading cause of death in America for people under the age of 45. And you've written so much about TikTok. You also have TikTok in the book. Why should we take Joe Biden serious, uh, seriously when he says TikTok uh, is a threat and, and, and he's got governments, be, you know, uh, government agencies banned from having TikTok on their phones? And yet what is he doing? He's using TikTok to campaign, to speak to young people. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's right. I mean, Joe Biden, uh, of course, has a lot of uh, powerful financial backers that have big investment stakes in ByteDance, the parent company. So he's got that pressure. But the larger issue is, while we're debating in the United States whether TikTok is a threat or what it represents, as I point out in the book, Maria, that's not the Chinese view. I quote extensively from Chinese uh, propaganda ministry officials and military officials. They call TikTok the Trojan horse that they're using against the West, and they lay out in excruciating detail how they use it as a propaganda tool to undermine the faith of American young people in their own country. And it's shocking. When you read their quotes, I'm telling you, you are going to look at this and say, this is what's been going on over the last five years. So it is astounding to me that a company like TikTok run by ByteDance, which does joint ventures with the Chinese Ministry of State Security in artificial intelligence, we are giving them unfettered access to young people in our country and pretending like, oh, there's nothing here to worry about. This is absolutely stunning. Uh, John Ratcliffe has been on this program, former director of national intelligence. He told us he believes China will interfere in the upcoming election. They want their guy, Joe Biden, in the White House. And you say? Absolutely. Uh, they're already doing it in multiple ways. Uh, and we need to realize that China has preferences, just like other countries, uh, and they want Joe Biden back. Uh, under President Trump, uh, they faced a lot of resistance. Trump would call them out verbally. Joe Biden doesn't do that. On fentanyl, he says he raises the issue with Xi, but there must be, quote, no finger pointing. Why are you not going to point fingers at a country that is doing this to the United States in addition to so many other things to us that literally is killing Americans? That's the thing. This is a kinetic war in the sense that Americans are dying. Uh, we're not having soldiers fighting each other, but unlike the Cold War with the Soviet Union, millions of Americans have died because of the policies that China is carrying out. And the fact that this president will not call them out or even mention it publicly is atrocious. It sure is atrocious. Peter, thank you very much. We'll be following your work. Uh, congratulations on this incredible book, Blood Money, available now. Peter Schweitzer joining us this morning. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Maria. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.